Hi guys, Jonathan Ferguson again, Keeper of Firearms and Artillery for the Royal Armouries and I've got another interesting historic firearm to show you and it is another, as we've had a couple of these now, of what we call last ditch firearms. Um, essentially, uh, firearms that are cheap enough uh, in terms of resources and cost and quick enough to make in quantity. So with the British Sten gun, that was about re-equipping the British Army uh, with a, a, a totally, almost a totally new type of weapon to them as quickly as possible. For Nazi Germany in 1944, late 1944 when this was designed, it was um, on, on, onto a losing battle essentially. It was uh, on the back foot, the Allies are winning, we still need to keep making pistols. We can't make enough uh, Lugers. We can't make enough P-38s, which was the new standard pistol for the German armed forces. And we also have to equip the Volkssturm, the German home guard. Older men, very young men and boys, uh, women of various ages, all eventually were equipped with weapons and sent out to fight. Um, so a design like this could serve both functions. It could replace, if necessary, the much more um, fancy, properly, traditionally made, machine steel, blued metal, lovingly polished <laughs> walnut, maybe not, but um, it could replace uh, standard service sidearms, officers, vehicle crews, things like that. And it could potentially equip the home guard who might have a need of basically any firearm and especially I think if things got really bad where you're operating as a resistance force a concealable uh, firearm handgun is potentially well, certainly better than nothing and uh, might actually be advantageous if you are having to conceal this from the invader so uh, I, I'm not aware of the, of the extent of issue of Vox Pistolen this one though I as far as I, I'm aware, was never issued uh, in, in this form. This was a prototype. So it's the M7082, very catchy name, um, Mauser version of the Volkspistole. This was produced uh, at Mauser Abteilung 37 under the direction of Alex Seidel. And as you probably can tell, if you've seen anything like this before, it's extensively made out of stamped sheet metal. So just like the old helmets, uh, well, not that old, they were still being made this way uh, for many years after the Second World War even, but back in the First World War, the first of the new wave of helmets was designed to be made with a hydraulic press that literally stamps the metal into a preset shape uh, determined by a die and you send it down the line to get the leather work put on it and away it goes. Same principle here. So the frame is a folded bit of sheet steel welded together. You can see the one of the ropey looking welds there. Uh, the slide is made in quite a similar way as well. The barrel is made in traditional uh, machine from solid sort of way because it has to be really um, to work. And it does have rifling and it has an eight shot P38 magazine because this had to essentially fulfill the same capability as a P38 pistol, but much, much cheaper. Um, you couldn't really make the P38 magazine much cheaper, if, if at all. It's already made out of sheets of metal folded and welded together. And by keeping it the same, you get to um, not, <laughs> you reduce the design problems of making the cartridges feed into the chamber properly. So, um, as I say, very much a last-ditch type weapon, sacrificing quality for quantity. Um, think of it like the pistol version of a Sten gun, um, one of the various German designs of a, a last-ditch nature as well, which you'll be able to see some of uh, when we reopen uh, later in the year in our Firefight Second World War display. Um, not this one, which is why I'm able to show it to you today, but there are several others in there of interest. There's a whole section about industry and infrastructure and how uh, different nations adapted to the challenge of uh, equipping their armed forces with potentially millions of weapons, depending on who they are. 
Uh, so this a uh, bit on the design history of this. Um, it was designed as uh, straight blowback, so just a, just the lump of metal here and the spring to keep it shut. And we're talking, you know, twenty five thousand pounds per square inch or more, more actually for for nine by nineteen parabellum. And you can design a weapon that works like that, and it makes it very cheap and very simple to make. Uh, the problem that was encountered in Germany, though, with this was that the recoil was excessive. So this would come back so quickly, not having any way of locking it shut until the pressures dropped, that it would cause excessive recoil. So to mitigate that, a gas delay system was cleverly redesigned into this, and this one was made with that gas delay system. So using the fired gases to push against the slide and keep it shut for a bit longer, very clever. Uh, but then for, for whatever reason, um, in 1945, that, was, that system was plugged up and this extra bit of weight added to the slide here. More on, on how this works on the Forgotten Weapons video for this, um, which was made eight years ago now, um, when Ian visited us before. So, um, I hope you, you found that interesting. Um, if you want a deeper dive, there is a great article by Graham Norgit of the HBSA, the Historical Breech Loading Small Arms Association, in their journal. You can find a copy of that via their website. And uh, Michael Heidler over in Germany has written a very good article on some of the other Volkspistolen on smallarmsreview.com. But um, other than that, thank you very much for watching. We have links in the description for ways that you can support the Royal Armouries and the work that we do here. Um, but other than that, I hope to see you again next week with another interesting firearm. Thanks very much.